Yo, welcome back everybody to a brand new video here on the Shovel Squad. Today I'm going to be showing off my anti-meta Arceus Flying Pikachu Beedrill deck. This deck counters the meta hard by using Beedrill to help against Mew and Lugia. And then Flying Pikachu with double big Paracel really helps us out quite a bit against Lost Box. Paracel can be very awkward to deal with when you're playing a Lost Box deck and you're trying to hit into the Flying Pikachu when they're max ballooning. With a Paracel on, it's very awkward to deal with. It's also good against stuff like Regis and can even block stuff like Radiant Charizard. And Paracel helps a lot against Lugia when they have that amazing rare Evil Tall. I was considering playing this deck to Toronto, actually. I think it was my second choice behind the Lugia Mewtwo deck that I ended up playing. Before I do get in the video, I want to ask if y'all want to leave a like in the video, show your support on the content. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe down below if you have not subbed yet. Make sure to check out our lovely sponsors down below, like Pokex Word. You can complete daily puzzles over there. You can also check out Atlas Collectibles. And if you get anything in Atlas Collectibles, if you use our discount code TSS12, you save yourself a 12% discount on your order, which is pretty insane. And you can also check out our new sponsor, Your Playmat, down below too. If you want to get your own custom playmate, you can check them out down below. And if you do that, anything over there, you can of course at the checkout use the discount code. TSS5YP to get yourself a little 5% discount on there too. But let's go scope out the deck list and see what this deck is all about. Here's my Arc Pika B list. Now I am deciding actually on Bib Barrel over Inteleon. I was trying out the Inteleon engine for a while, but a lot of the times I just found that it was really clunky and inconsistent, and a lot of the times I was bricking. Yes, Inteleon is a very easy way to cheat out Beedrills as opposed to using the barrel, which makes it harder to pull off mustard combos, but there are a lot of ways you can pull off mustard thanks to cards like Ultra Ball, Quick Ball, but even Lost Vacuum, which I am playing two copies of Lost Vacuum. One of the benefits of Lost Vacuum is that you can actually discard a card from your hand, essentially, removing two cards from your hand, basically counting as like a sixth Quick Ball, and Vacuum is also just a nice card to have as it can get rid of annoying stuff like Path and Tools, so it helps you out even more when you're trying to get access to cards like Luminion or Arceus's, you know, ability Starbirth, and that's why the Double Vacuum can help us pull off Mustard Plays too, because we have the Vacuum, Ultra Ball, Quick Ball combo to pull them off, but of course we have Starbirth. A lot of the time when you play Starbirth, you're always guaranteeing yourself a mustard. I don't know if there's any going to be a time where you're not going to starbirth into a mustard. It's very unlikely that it doesn't happen. And a lot of the time, if you just are season a mustard, right, and then you just go with a late game mustard later on, of course, the Beedrill persisting does insta KO them, Lugias, and it's really good against Mew. It's one of the reasons why this deck does not play a single copy of Drapion V, because you just have Beedrill, which insta KOs Mew anyways. You also have Flying Pikachu, which is very good against a lot of decks. I mean, if you're playing against a Lugia deck, the Dunsparce, or you knock out the Dunsparce early on, you have access to Flying Pikachu, even though you have Beedrill, but you never know. It might be the Espeon build, right? So then Beedrill doesn't work. But you do have Max Balloon, which can be very helpful in that matchup. But you can also use Pikachu against some all basic decks. Reggie's is really good. And also Lost Box is also good. Basically against Lost Box, if you put a big parasol on, as you can see, we're playing two copies of Big Parasol on this deck. We put a big parasol on our Flying Pikachu VMAX and we hit them with Max Balloon. And they really can't respond to that. If they don't have a vacuum or if they've exhausted the last vacuum, if they have no way to stop Big Parasol and Max Balloon, then a lot of the time they'll just lose the game. And that's why the Flying Pikachu double Parasol combo is so deadly in this deck. It's very good against Lost Box. And it's one of the ways we counter. And this basically turns into an anti-meta deck because Beedrill can be good against Mew and Lugia, whereas Flying Pikachu can be good against Lost Box. But Flying Pikachu can still be good against Lugia because you can still use it with a Paracel and stop stuff like Evil Tall and Radiant Charizard from attacking you. Then they're forced to like go Archeops, which can be awkward. So it still makes for some good awkward scenarios. And the Barrel is just extra consistency. It let us play more cards in the deck, like more energy. The problem I have with the Inteleon build of the deck that I tried out is there wasn't a lot of energy. I think I only played like 10 energy in the deck because there's so many cards I had to play with the Inteleon line. I just ran out of space for stuff, but the Barrel really frees up space. I also get to play Radiant Gardevoir. I really like Gardevoir because it allows you to be a little bit more bulkier. It does help you against Mew and Lugia sometimes, so that Gardevoir does come in handy. It gives Pikachu more bulk. It goes up to 330 HP. It gives Arceus 300 HP. I even thought about adding a V-Guard energy or two in the deck because it makes you even more tankier, and that can be even harder for the opponent to deal with your setup. Everything else is kind of the normal stuff you'd see in an Arceus deck. Let's go show the deck off on Peace Joe and show off why I like it so much. Because I honestly was considering this deck for Toronto Regionals. Okay, we are going to open up a Gardevoir and Bidoof. I'll open up a Guardi. I think Guardi is the best starter here in this scenario over Bidoof. All right, what are we up against? Ooh, a Lost Zone deck. Okay. So we do have a pretty good start. I don't know if we're going to get to use the Beedrill, depending on what matchup this is. We do have Flying Pikachu in the deck. We did prize one of our VMAXs, though, which is a big deal. Might be Giratina. Might also just be Lost Box, which... We'll see if we can take down. But we do have a pretty good hand. We got the Marnie. We got the Arceus V-Star. The Energy. We just got to get, like, Flying Pikachu in play. We got to get the big Paracel on. Again, we do play double Paracel in the deck to try to hard counter these effect attacks. 
So we do want to make sure we get that Parasol in play when we are able to. There's a Scuba Net getting played going into the other Comfy. There's a Faw Crystal. Judging for the Faw Crystal, this is most likely a single prize Lost Box deck, probably using a Radiant Charizard. And if it's honestly, like, not the Kyogre build, this matchup's probably pretty free, in all honesty. We'll see how many Vacuums are playing, though. But this matchup should be pretty good. And unfortunately, they do get a turn one Colrus, which is not nice. So I'm glad I opened Gardevoir, because if they have the Cramorant here, they'd be able to spit to knock me out, which would not be good. So that is nice that that didn't happen. What do they got, though? They got an Air Balloon. Do they have a Cram? They can still spit my Guardi, which I don't want them to do. Capture? Yeah, they got it. Okay, that's fine. Gardevoir taking the damage doesn't matter. We don't even really need Gardevoir in this matchup. Assuming this is not Giratina, it just doesn't really matter too much. Do they have an escape rope, maybe? That'd be annoying. No, they just spit. All right. It's fine. We don't want to try to get the Pikachu and play with the Parasolon at ASAP. So let's Ultra Ball here. We'll grab the Arceus V-Star. Do we have our air balloons and Paracels in the deck? We do. Okay, good. And they'll just uh, Marnie and pray. Hopefully Marnie gets rid of their hand. That was good. There's Paracel. There's Mustard too. Might be able to mustard next turn. Well, here's what we're actually gonna do. We're just gonna get rid of the Beedrill. We don't even need Beedrill in this matchup. We are going to grab the Barrel. Because Barrel we do need. I'm gonna draw three cards because I need to save the Paracels for Pikachu. Okay, there's energy. Meaning we can Starbirth here for an air balloon and a flying Pikachu V. We are gonna leave ourselves in top deck mode, but we have the Barrel, so it should be fine. So let's retreat. I'll play the Paracel now, and then we'll just Trini Nova. Could have maybe saved the Paracel, actually. I think it's fine, though. We'll just do this. And then build up Pikachu. We need to get another Pikachu going here. I do have a Flying Pikachu VMAX prize, so there is a chance I get the Pikachu out of the prizes, and then I can immediately get it into play, which would be really poggers here. No, but we get Luminion. Eh, I don't really want to bench that, to be honest. I don't really want to give my opponent too many two prize options so they can get around my, art my Flying Pikachu uh, Paracel combo. They get rid of Air Balloon. They got another Colrus, so my Marnie did absolutely nothing. Good to know. But will they be able to do a Sableye this turn? I think that's what they're eyeing up here. Because they are now at 7. I think they're going to spit me again. They could Rope, but I can just give them Gardevoir. We know Gardevoir is probably not good in this matchup. Judging from my opponent's guy. There's Sableye. Oh, no. There's Cape. That's fine. Doesn't really do anything. There's a scoop-up net on the Comfy. They've already done that Comfy, though. They're probably just going to go back into the Comfy. They might actually get to do Sableye here, which would be really bad. I don't like that. Five, eight. They need two more cards in the Lost Zone to do Sableye. Plus, they need a Psychic and a Switch. They actually need a lot here to pull off Sableye. There's honestly a pretty good chance they don't have it. They might not even attack me this turn, to be honest. Depending on... Well, no, they probably have a scoop-up net in hand or something. Capture Energy, that's fine. Another Cram. They got three Cramorants in their deck. Okay, then. Okay, nope. They had another Switch card. That's fine. Okay. We need to find Flying Pikachu here. Can we do it? We do. Right off of the lovely top deck. We'll grab the Pika. And now we just basically want a Pikachu with the, lot, with the big Parasolon. And we just, like, try to cheese him here. That's literally all we do. This is the most straightforward way to beat Lost Zone. And that's how you do it. Retreat. Not gonna bother playing the vacuum. I don't think we ever wanna give them more cards. We're just gonna max balloon them here and see where it takes us. What do we got? Arceus, pretty good prize. No, I'm just joking, it's not a good prize. Could have gotten another flying Pikachu V down, but we'll see. I don't really need to get it just yet. Plus the other V Max is prize. I don't wanna give him like an easy two prize liability. We need to hold the hand too, because I need to make sure we keep the big parasol around for the Sableye. There's Clara getting discarded. So they're at 10 now. But if they don't find a vacuum, this Paracel is going to stick around. And if this Paracel is going to stick for a couple of turns and we keep taking knockouts with Max Balloon, we're going to eventually just win the game at that point because we'll be so far ahead, it doesn't even matter if they start sending up damage. There's Sableye. Do they have a vacuum? Four cards in hand. Is there a lost vacuum here? If there's no lost vacuum, then I'm going to knock out the Sableye. I'm going to also hold the Luminion for boss so they don't play Path. So I want to make sure we're doing boss potentially too. Um, but yeah, they have a four-card hand. They have to have a lost vacuum here if they're going to stop this Paracel. They have a Fantina. Does that work? Five? Ten? Wow, okay. 
I mean, that doesn't matter, though. They're still not able to do anything here because of the Paracel, but uh, did not expect to see them play a Fantina. Not going to lie. That is kind of spicy. Hmm. Okay, that's fine. I kind of have to boss here because we're doing 100 less damage. What do we draw? Quick Ball. See, I'm tempted to boss here knock out Mana Fee. I'm only doing 60 damage. This thing does not get killed. Is boss in the deck? Okay, well, let's thin the hand down. Is boss in there? We do have a boss. Okay, we'll do this. We'll be barrel for two first. Yeah, I don't want to play vacuum. I guess it doesn't really matter if we do anymore, though, to be honest. All right. Yeah, they just scoop anyways. I was going to say, I was going to Luminion, grab boss, and then boss the mana fee. Because I'm only doing 60 damage, because... <laughs> actually, I could have knocked out a cram, but they just body me with a Fantina. Which, actually, that's a cool tech card. I'm not going to lie. That's a cool tech card. Cave Fantina is kind of spicy. But, again, Flying Pikachu, Paracel, what do you do? And that's why we're playing it in the deck. Because, as you can see, it just hard counters my opponent's lost box deck. And it's one of the reasons why Flying Pikachu, Paracel is so anti-meta right now. All right, we are going to be going second. We actually have a turn one Beedrill... Depending on what we top deck here, we can probably get a Beedrill in play, which could be pretty spicy. And I definitely might do it. My opponent benches four Pokemon, though. Sableye with a Mill Tank. All right, we definitely want to get Beedrill down. They are actually weak to grass, too. Beedrill is going to go off here. Their start is actually kind of insane, though. So, yeah, no, if I can pull off this Beedrill here, that would be great. All right, give me a playable card so I can Beedrill. Nice, let's go. We got Beedrill. So, yeah, we're going to go straight for the turn one Beedrill, I think. Hopefully, they're in the deck. They are, yep. Um, either I got Pikachu or Arceus. I guess flying Pikachu is still good. Might as well grab it. There's no reason not to. Yeah, that's fine. And then we'll just go Mustard into Beedrill here and hopefully get some good cards. There's a double turbo. That's really good, actually. I'll play this too. Get the Grass Energy back just in case they hit me with a Marnie. And I'll Trini Charge. We'll do this. We'll go lightning, grass, lightning. All right, cool. Pretty good turn if you ask me. Uh, my opponent definitely got a good start, but so did we. So we're even. They shouldn't be able to knock me out. Well, actually, I guess they could. Flapple, Flannery, what? Not my double turn. Okay, that's annoying. I can always get air balloon, though. I don't think they're going to get a KO here, are they? I can persist Sting if they knock me out. No, they didn't get a knockout. All right, and now we just Beedrill them into Oblivion. Um, Pretty straightforward stuff. There's Guardi. That's good. We'll bench that. We'll Starbirth for Air Balloon. And I guess Bidoof is kind of cool. I got Big Barrel in hand. Sure. Let's grab that Balloon. Go into the B. Play the Serena. Get rid of this. Draw four cards. May want to try to get another um, Beedrill going if we can. Well, Persisting. And, I mean, they can't knock me out this turn, which is nice. There's Bidoof. Bottom card is always good, too. It's another supporter. It's probably going to Marnie them next turn. Honestly, I prefer Beedrill lived. I might end up just going into Arceus or Pikachu next turn, depending on the scenario where you get put in. And I can hopefully just attack and then save Beedrill for a rainy day. We do need Beedrill here for their Mill Tank. We don't have a way to deal with Mill Tank at the moment. But uh, that was a pretty spicy turn there. We got the turn one Beedrill, and they didn't gust it or anything. And then we just got the Persisting KO. And Beedrill can do more stuff. It actually KOs Absol, weak to grass, one shots Mill Tank. Um, pretty good stuff. So we definitely have some aggressive power we have. That didn't make any sense. We have a lot of things we can do with Beedrill. Like a lot of aggressive plays we can make. And we have a lot of power on our bench with Pikachu and Arceus being kind of a nuisance for my opponent. So. I will see if they can get me here. They're taking a while to promote their Pokemon. I don't know if they're stuck or not. They might not know what to promote here. Because what do you really go into? It has to be Absol, right? But they just scoop anyways. We'll take the dub. All right, up against Mew here, which is definitely a matchup I think we can beat. And we do have a pretty good start. We should have the turn two Mustard. Which, yeah, we do have all that going on. We even have the Beedrill in the deck, which is good. I'm going to pass. So hopefully my opponent does not kill Arceus here because we should be able to mustard into Beedrill and then go from there. Actually, it would be perfect if I didn't have to use Starbirth to get Beedrill into play. 
would actually be perfect if we didn't have to use Starbirth to go Beedrill. Because then we can save... Because ideally, we just go knock out two Mews and we win, right? And if we save Starbirth, it'll be easier to get a second Beedrill into play. It's harder to get the second Beedrill than it is the first Beedrill into play. Because the first Beedrill, you can just Starbirth. Hopefully, our Arceus survives, too. But there is a world where maybe I find Air Balloon plus Grass. I mean, very low, but we'll see. So you do get rid of a Mew VMAX and a Psychic Energy. All right, they got about Genesec. Now, if my opponent doesn't play Special Energy down, it'd be kind of weird, but I'm pretty sure they will. Okay, we just got to hope Arceus doesn't die here. Oh, they got the Sparkle. Oh, they find like a... Well, actually, it doesn't matter. They're not going to kill me now because they've Sparkled. Okay, never mind. They're not going to kill me because they can't do at least a Sparkle plus... Um, they can't go Meloetta. So, technically, we're safe. Yeah, they can't knock out my Arceus. They can knock out my Bidoof, though, which would suck. I would prefer to have B Barrel in play. But we'll see if they end up getting an energy to Psychic Leap me for a KO here. See if they have it like that. Ooh, nice. They're burning tablets. Makes my Arceus harder to KO, especially if I get the Gardevoir down. Okay, what do they got? Old Cemetery. That's fine. There's Cremomatic. Will it flip heads? It doesn't. They had a rope, too. And they actually whiff. Okay. Now, do I want to... I don't think I want to Beedrill them here. Oh, we drew the Mustard. No. Okay, we're going to have to do this. Oh, my God. What a bad draw. That's ridiculous that we drew that. It's fine. We're going to go do this. We got to do Starbirth. Should be okay. That really sucks. I'm just going to get... Double Turbo Air Balloon. We'll knock out this Mew. That's so unfortunate that I drew the friggin' mustard there. That would have been... Honestly, that's the worst top deck we could have gotten. But you know what? We're gonna just, you know, hopefully... They're down with, like, some tabs. So there's actually a pretty good chance we don't get KO'd here. So I'm gonna just hope they don't knock me out and see if we can get a good way to pull off mustard. Not off of those. I, those are just two cards I already have in play. This is not going well. That mustard top deck completely screwed me over. Maybe I should have just played Mustard anyways, because I guess I can do it with one Beedrill. But they could also boss the Beedrill here, and then I can't one-shot a Mew, and then it becomes really hard to win. Ooh, they're going to boss my Barrel. That's not good. If I lose Barrel, I'm going to be in top deck mode, unless I draw a ball. If they go Mew VMAX here, though, knock out Barrel, then it's okay to do Beedrill then. I just have to pull off the Beedrill. Damn, bro. That Mustard top deck sucks. I'm actually salty about that. That is, like, the worst top deck we could have gotten, man. Whatever. We'll see if they end up doing anything here. Another tab? All right, that's good. I I like them wasting their tablets. Now my Arceus is even harder to KO, even with that old Cemetery damage. Vacuum, the reason I didn't play the training course, I can draw Vacuum, and I can Vacuum away the Cemetery or, like, Choice Belt or something and, like, try to get my hand down low. So one of the reasons why Lost Vacuum is so good in this deck is because it acts as an extra Quick Ball, so it makes it easier to pull off Mustard. Okay, well, I don't think they'll knock me out, but it's possible, I guess. They play Silene. Oh, thank heavens we drew that. All right, let's go. We drew the ult. That was the most clutch top deck I think I could have got. Uh, I'm going to get Gardevoir here, just in case. We're going to muster a Beedrill into play. Hopefully find a Grass Energy here so we can kill Mew. We do not get a Grass Energy. Oof. Not good. That gives him a free second go, but whatever. It doesn't really matter. Bit of a whiff there. We'll hold on. I guess if they actually knock out my Beedrill here, that would really suck. That is super unfortunate we didn't find a Grass Energy. So hopefully they don't knock out my Beedrill here. They are down two boss. So, no, they're only down one boss. So they played two. My Beedrill's dead, isn't it? Yep. No. <laughs> I just wanted to Beedrill you. That is so annoying that I couldn't find a Grass. That's his worst case scenario against Mew. Whiffing the Grass into the knockout and losing both of your Mustards without playing Palpad really sucks. But it looks like they actually get a record. Did they not get a boss? And they can still find it, obviously. Never punished. They didn't even play the training court. No, I guess that's why. If Beedrill lives, that'd be great. Because they might go into the other Mew, obviously. And I don't have a Gust right now. Please don't do it. I want my Be. I need Beedrill to live. Bro, it's in the thumbnail. It's just unfortunate PC Joe RNG didn't give me a grass energy. Nothing I can do. And they also made me draw the other mustard, which makes it so I can't do double beetle now. So nothing I can really do there. It's just kind of kind of the game's fault, not mine. Ha ha. Uh, there's an Ultra Ball getting played. Don't like that. Ooh, Genesect skin discarded. I don't think I can ever KO Jenny, though. If I ever KO Genesect, it's like they only have one left in play, but whatever. All right. Five card draw. Can they find a boss to KO my Beedrill? 
Can they also not get my Arceus? See, this is why I like the vacuum. Okay, they don't have a boss. Thank heavens. Oh my god. They didn't get a boss. So that's good. What are they going to do here, though? They have... They don't go to their Mew. Interesting. Okay. Hmm. So... That was a good top deck. So all I have to do... Do I have Luminion plus boss? I do. Okay. So I'm just going to KO Mew here. I think we got to go KO with Beedrill so we don't give up Arceus. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to Rod. I'm going to put back Bit Barrel and Bidoof. We'll research. Hopefully going into Beedrill. Yeah. And we have game in hand. Perfect. So we'll go attach. I'm going to vacuum here. Get rid of the choice belt on that benched Mew. We're going to retreat into Beedrill. And I'm going to knock him out Beedrill here. Because then I only give up one prize, map making it harder for my opponent. Because if I give up Arceus, they knock out Pikachu, they can win. Just in case they rock Sammy or something and I get like a really bad hand. I think I'd rather give up one prize here. And then all I have to do now is just boss out the Meloetta or the Oricorio and knock it out with either Arceus or Pikachu. So that is basically checkmate. Yep, that should be checkmate. Because we have the Luminion, we got Bibarel back in the deck. So if we find Bibarel, we can also try to, you know, Bibarel into a boss. And that should game my opponent has to answer this beedrill here because it's going to knock out whatever pokemon they try to attack me with with persisting so they have to kill the beedrill but they don't kill the beedrill so it's basically checkmate unless they get rid of my hand and i draw really badly that's the only way i think they can stop me here is yeah they have to do one of that or they play a big parasol and they knock out with a boss but nope that's game techno blast and i have gust in hand for game knocking out my poor little b what did he ever do to you Let's promote Pikachu, because why not? And then we'll uh, draw. Yeah, we had we had quick balls in the deck to find the Luminion for game two, if we really had to. And we will take the dub here. There you go. That was a really awkward scenario. Again, that mustard top deck changed the entire trajectory of the match completely. But thankfully, it all worked out in the end. The Shuffle Squad is proudly sponsored by Atlas Collectibles, the best place to buy any trading card game product online. Visit atlastcg.com and at the checkout screen make sure to use code TSS12 to save an unbeatable 12% off your entire order. Atlas Collectibles will ship your product anywhere in the world, so make sure you're taking advantage of the 12% savings with TSS12. And if Pokemon is not your thing, don't worry. Go to atlastcg.com and see all the other amazing trading card game products they have there to offer. The Shuffle Squad has partnered with PTCGO Store to provide our community with the best access to Pokemon TCG codes. They have codes available 24-7, instant email delivery, and you can save 5% off by using code TSS5. If you're a YouTube member or Patreon supporter, you'll have access to a special code that gets you 10% off. So what are you waiting for? Use code TSS5 today and save 5% on your next order of codes on any codes available at ptcgostore.com. PokeXWord, the best place to get your fill of Pokemon-inspired puzzles. New puzzles are posted every day and they recently launched a new Guess That Pokemon puzzle, which is a ton of fun to play. Go check them out at pokexword.com and be sure to follow them on Twitter for your chance to win a ton of PTCGO codes every month. Check out the Late Night Series Season 6, brought to you by myself, Zach Lesage, and the Shovel Squad. We're going to be running a bunch of sick events for the Pokemon community, and they start on August 30th. So one thing you might be noticing here is that there's an EU time and an NA time. We have one at 12 p.m. Eastern, which works out to about 5 p.m. in London. And then we have one at 7 p.m. Eastern, which should help out a lot of players on the West Coast play in this event. That being said, we still have a lot of cool things going on. Expect similar prizing that we've had for other late night series events. Expect better staffing. Except, expect better tournament experiences. And of course, we do have a stream going up for this season as well, and I will be streaming the event on Twitch. That being said, we have the whole season up on the Play Limitless website. Late Night 51 all the way through 70 runs until we hit the, reg the Invitational on November 5th. So check that out, sign up today, and support Zach Lesage Events and the Shuffle Squad. See you there.